Compared to the rest of the galaxy, humanity is by far the friendliest. To many star systems, they are considered the good neighbor and are known for their helpfulness. One day an oblivious system declares war on humanity, only to find half of the galaxy responding to humanity's plea for aid. The humans are a strange species. They found my people in ancient times, when the wheel and fire were still cutting-edge technology. They built and station in orbit around our world, as was their way, and observed our development. They did not interfere with our development too much. When our home was threatened by an asteroid strike in ancient times, they destroyed it. When a supervolcano erupted and cast our world into volcanic winter, they descended from on high and cleaned our atmosphere. We praised them as gods for a time, gods that came when we were in true need and helped us escape extinction. That was the only time they approached us directly. Their great ships landed where we preached of their glory, and they set us right. They told us that they were not gods, but were flesh and blood like us. They had learned how the world worked, and through doing so, they had learned to control the world. Through their hard work and study, they had elevated themselves to the point where they worked miracles through their technology. They told us not to worship them, but instead to follow in their footsteps. Our people became very eager to join the humans among the stars. We wanted to be like them, powerful enough to bend the world towards our interests. As we grew more advanced, the humans seemed to grow more distant. Disasters came without the humans coming to fix them. We were confused by this. We were worried by this, and we were angry, until we figured out why the humans did not intervene. It was because we were able to fix more of our problems ourselves. We came to understand, without being told, that the humans did not want to rob us of the challenges that let us grow. Necessity is the mother of invention, and they did not want to take away the stress that we could deal with. We went through the growing pains of a sentient species, agriculture, industrialization, hate, power hunger, and more, until the most dangerous came upon us. We discovered the power of the atom. The humans did not intervene when first we used the weapons that were born of the atom. Atomic hellfire wiped a city out, and a war was ended. Nuclear peace began, one as uneasy as the nuclear peace of human history. But that also drove us to the stars. The missiles we made to deliver death across the world were also the key to breaking free of gravity's iron grip. Our first mission was, of course, to reach the human research station. We had a few failures along the way. A few people died. But we made it in the end. We docked with the station, and we met the humans in person once more. They were so happy to see us having succeeded in getting past the first hurdle. They encouraged us to keep exploring, to keep learning, and to be careful with the weapons we had built. We were not. It's been a long time since the day of Armageddon, the day that tensions finally broke, and the decision was made to end the world. Missiles launched, sirens flared, mothers lied to their children, telling them that everything would be okay. Old friends got together for one last drink before the end. Several children were made, but the end didn't come. The humans did what they always did. They saved us from extinction when we couldn't save ourselves. Great beams of light were sent out from the research satellites. They struck the missiles, and there were no missiles anymore when the beams ended. There wasn't even a blast. Then, they made a request to us. They took control of every signal, every radio, every video screen, everything. They addressed our world, and they asked us to avoid going to war, even though the threat of nuclear annihilation had been lifted from our world by their intervention. They told us that, whatever our differences might be, they weren't great enough to justify destroying each other. We did as we were asked. We did our best not to go to war. It worked, on the whole. Countries stopped fighting each other, although internal wars still flared up from time to time. We continued to struggle forward, until we eventually managed to join the humans. We discovered the secrets behind the warp drives that humans relied upon, and they celebrated out triumph as we ascended to join the galactic community. We learned that the humans were not alone among the stars and that we were not unique in how the humans had treated us. There were dozens of species like ours, who the humans had taken an interest in. They had protected them and encouraged them. When they emerged from their homeworlds with FTL capabilities, the humans had supported their growth. They'd helped us find worlds to colonize, and they'd sent terraforming ships out to create new garden worlds for us to inhabit. They never asked for anything in return. To them, helping intelligent species like ours reach the stars was simply the right thing to do. They believed that all intelligent life was valuable, and that it should be allowed, if not outright encouraged, to flourish. 
They wanted to see their local cluster filled with life, and they'd been working on that for a very long time. The Grell eventually found the humans. They were another of the elder species, as old as the humans were, but they were not as ancient as the remnants. They had come to the stars seeking to spread their empire, to unite all life beneath their banner, and to make all a part of their superior culture. When they looked upon our local cluster, they thought they saw an easy conquest. They saw dozens of weak species and nations that could be easily conquered. And the only species of real relevance, the humans, were pacifistic scientists that hadn't been at war for a very long time. They ignored us and attacked the humans first, seeking to destroy the only thing that remotely resembled a threat. They expected that we would not come to the humans' aid, and they were wrong. The humans were not always as peaceful as they were when we were uplifted to the stars. They had been warriors once, and they had always been scientists. Their ships of war awakened from long hibernation, with our people at their helms. While the humans had forgotten war, we had all experienced it. It took us a while to figure out how to do it in space, but we figured it out, and we taught the humans what they had forgotten. The humans turned their economy away from terraforming and the spreading of life, and towards the creation of a larger armada. We held the line together, defending the local cluster until the armada was ready. Then, we pushed the Grell back. We destroyed their ships, and we stranded their people on dozens of planets. We freed those that they had conquered, but few of them were strong enough to join us. We destroyed their infrastructure to stop them from returning to the stars, and set them back to their stone age in the process. But we did not drive them to extinction. Instead, we built space stations around their worlds, and we watched over them, hoping to guide them back to the stars again once they had learned the lesson of war. We returned to peace and exploration, and the humans returned to spreading life and guiding new intelligence to the stars.